everyone, Kareem Ray here, and today I have the pleasure of interviewing Tor Saunders, who is a professional soccer player at North Carolina FC. Tor, thank you for taking the time for joining us today. How's it going? It's good, man. I'm excited to be here, excited to answer some questions for your time. I'm looking forward to our chat. Absolutely. So you're a goalkeeper. I'm going to start off right there. And, you know, there's only, what, two, three positions for each team to be a goalkeeper? Yeah. And on the field, there's 10 players. So there's definitely more opportunity to become a player than a goalkeeper. So yeah. super excited to have you on. Um, you know, how hard has it been to become a professional goalkeeper? No, I mean, it's definitely been a challenge. You know, I've, I've been through so many ups and downs in my career and, you know, lucky, lucky to be where I am now. And, you know, I've got a good story that comes with it, like everybody else that is, you know, battled and, and tried to make it to the top of the level and you know it's it's definitely a challenge your goalkeeper is not the most glamorous position in the world you know your one save can be you know mirrored by one mistake or you can have the best game of your career and you let one stinker in and that's all everybody remembers so it's 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 a challenging position you know a lot of pressure but i enjoy it you know i've been playing for it for so long that it's just natural now so you know yeah for sure you gotta have a lot of confidence where does the confidence come for you I mean, I think the confidence comes, like, like a lot of people, it's just, we, we, you know, everybody forgets it, but you, when you've done the same thing and you've trained for so long over and over again, you have to have confidence in what you do, because if you don't, then you know, what, what's the point in doing it at all? Obviously, we come to training every single day, and I've been playing since I was, since I can remember, I think it was about three when I played in my first team, so, you know, it's not like I haven't been playing forever and that I shouldn't have any confidence in what I do, so it's 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 definitely something that I've been working on for so long, but. Uh, it's something I enjoy and you know something that just brings confidence when you train yeah absolutely was it was there ever a point you know obviously way in the beginning where you started off uh, playing as a goalkeeper and was a confidence always there or you know was it something that you gradually built up no I mean it's definitely waved in times for sure you know as a young kid there's definitely less confidence and I think with age and you know just experience of playing the position there, there's more confidence that comes with it. You know, a lot of times a goalkeeper's prime is not until their thirties because it's such a seeing exact situations and, and just playing in games is such an important thing. So, you know, there's confidence is still coming, you know, it, it's, it's something that just keeps building and building and building. I have confidence in myself and I believe in my abilities, but it's still always getting put, you know, put to the test and I believe in myself. So, I, you know, I enjoy playing and that's why I do it. Absolutely. <laughs> Take us back in time and just share, you know, where you're from, how you got involved in the beautiful game. Yeah, no, um, I'm from Spokane, Washington, originally. Um, so I was born there and my dad was a semi-professional soccer player. And, um, you know, he had my brother and me playing soccer from, from the day we were born, kicking a ball around. And um, when I was about 10 years old, I moved over to Seattle, Washington. Um, was fortunate to play in a couple of good clubs over there and got into the Sounders Academy, um, which was, you know, a really exciting thing. And, you know, to get a taste of kind of what that professional environment was like was, was a really cool thing for, you know, a 14 year old kid. Um, I ended up playing in the Sounders Academy until I graduated and went on to, uh, went on to university of Akron where I was at for three and a half years and had a lot of good success there. Went to two final fours, lost in the national championship and, you know, played with some excellent guys and great players. Um, after my senior year there, I decided I was ready for a change and decided to transfer, um, which took me over to Coastal Carolina. I was looking for a little bit better weather and, you know, just a change of scenery. And so went over to South Carolina out there and Coastal, you know, had a good season, had a lot of success in that COVID year and was uh, fortunate to get drafted that year, it was a, which was a really cool experience. And found myself in Nashville, SC. And, you know, after that season finished, I went out to Nashville, played there for a year, which was, you know, a great challenge and a great experience and, you know, something I'm fond of and will remember for the rest of my life. Um, and from there, I've been, you know, I went to Indy 11 for a year, went on loan at Chattanooga Red Wolves, and here I am at North Carolina FC. So I've, I've had a journey of a lot of different places all over the country and, you know, wouldn't change it for a thing. I'll say that. Absolutely. I want to take it a step back a little bit. In regards to after graduating high school and then making a decision whether you were going to go to university or not, you know, um, it's not an easy decision. What advice would you give to players that their goal is to become a professional soccer player, right? Everyone's pathway is different, but 
you know, again, it's, you know, if you go to university, it's not the end of your professional career. It could actually be a healthy stepping stone and you could pursue both. So, you know, what went into your decision making of whether you were going to go to university or not? And what did you study? Yeah, I mean, for me, in my personal experience, I wasn't ready to to try and go be a pro at the time. Um, I needed more time to mature and um, work on my game and everything like it. And I think that's for a lot of people that even if your goal and you're so set, I have to be a professional, I have to be a professional. I think it's important to really take a step back and look if it's the right opportunity or option for you at the time. Um, and obviously, there's a value in an education as well. You have to be aware that you can't play forever. And, you know, eventually your career is going to come to an end and you have to find something else that's going to be your passion once that happens that you're ready to go into and work. So I think an education can also be valuable. And it's not to say that, you know, as a 17 year old kid, if you're the best kid in the world, I would, you know, say, don't, don't go be a professional because I think everybody has their own unique situation. Um, when I went to school, I ended up studying sports marketing and sports management. Um, I was working on a couple other minors while I was there, but, uh, so that's, I was just had a love for sports and, you know, it was something that, that interested me and, you know, I enjoyed my classes there at both coastal and Akron. So I'm glad that I have that degree now and have, you know, had some experience in the sports world as well as, you know, learning about the back workings of it as well. Absolutely. Um, you know, I think that's a great piece of advice, you know, in soccer injuries are a part of the game. Um, that's it. That's something that could just end your career right there and then. And then, you know, being able to fall back on a university or college degree is, is amazing. Um, <clears throat> with saying that, you know, after you're, you graduated from university, did you sign professional right out the gates or was it a few years later? How did it, how did your first contract come about? Yeah. So that COVID year at Coastal was an interesting one. Um, there was only two conferences playing. It was the Sun Belt, which we were in, and the ACC. So that fall, it was, you know, just the Sun Belt and the ACC, like I said. So there was a lot of eyes on those games because those were the only college games around. And, you know, they still had the draft coming up and everything like that. And so you know, I was fortunate to, to be playing for one of those schools that was actually playing during that fall. And, you know, I took advantage of that opportunity and had a really good year. And you know, I got drafted in that that draft and um you know i went back to school um nashville sent all their rookies back to school all their draft picks went back to school because um, that was the one college year where it was played in the fall and the spring um so i ended up going back to school and, and finishing finishing out that season in the ncaa tournament um and you know when i went out to nashville i had a contract set up and they were looking to sign me so right after school i kind of knew what i was getting into and I remember, you know, finishing the NCAA tournament and within a week I was down in Nashville already, you know, waiting, waiting to get into training. So it was a quick turnaround. Didn't really even get to go to graduation or anything like that. But, you know, that's that's what comes with it sometimes. So, Yeah. And when um, when you say Nashville, the MLS team, Nashville. Yeah. And then the draft, you know, I want to shed some light on this a little bit. Not everyone knows that the draft is not a guaranteed signed contract. Yeah. Um. It's it's an opportunity to try out for the MLS club that you got selected for, and they give you a time period of how long you're trying out at that club, and then they make a decision. So, what was your experience like? I've heard about the draft. I've never been it, been there, or seen it, but it sounds super exciting, super cool, super fast, and a dream come true. So, um, could you just share um, your experience in regards to once you got to Nashville? How long were you there for, and then what happened after? Yeah, so. Mine's a little unique. Um, first of all, that COVID season, the draft, we didn't have anything in person. Everything was over the phone. And I mean, I was sitting at, in my in my uh, apartment with my three roommates and we were watching the draft and watching names get picked and picked. And I knew I was on the list. I wasn't sure. I had an idea that there might be a chance I was getting drafted, but didn't have a like set idea. And, you know, eventually it popped up in the third round. And, you know, I was obviously ecstatic and celebrating with my roommates. And I got a call from you know, my head coach and he said, Hey, look, here's the, you know, so, so happy for you. Congratulations. I got the guys from Nashville on the phone, uh, here they are. And so obviously we had a conversation, everything like that. Um, now saying when I got to Nashville, it was a little unique as well, where, um, the season had already started because we had played into the spring. Um, and that final week before I was, I played actually wake forest in the NCAA tournament in the first round. Um, the week before that game, I got a call up from my agent and he was like, yeah, got some great news for you. Nashville wants to sign you before you even come in. So obviously ecstatic with that because, you know, that trialing period and, you know, like you said, exactly. The draft isn't a guarantee. 
Um, you know, I've heard, you know, there was five guys in my draft class and only three of us signed for the team. You know, two guys came in and unfortunately it didn't work out, but I was lucky that I had a contract going in and that obviously eased my nerves a little bit and made me a little bit more comfortable and, you know, growing into, you know, it takes time to adjust to any, any level you, you move up to. So, so going into that, I had, you know, had, had to learn again, almost, you know, you're going at a faster speed, you're playing against better players. It, it took time for me to adjust. Um, and it was something that I'm glad I got to learn and go through and experience because it was a challenge. And I, you know, I was happy to be, be in that challenge. I'll say that. For sure. For the next generation listening in uh, that will be listening to this podcast, you know, can you give some insight to them in regards to what changed from university to pro? Because yeah. you just mentioned that you had to readjust and change and adapt. Um, what was the difference? Yeah, I mean, first of all, the speed. Obviously, the speed of the game is just faster when, once you keep moving up levels. And I, I would say one of the biggest things is the guy's intelligence. Everybody's just smarter in the game. You know, uh, I, I remember a big challenge for me was – obviously the shots come faster and everything like this, but I had guys looking where I was set, looking which way I was leaning and hitting it the other way. Like these guys were seeing me and reading me while also reading the entire game around them. You know, in college, it's a lot of times you have some guys that are very dangerous and you know, they're powerful, but they just smash the ball as hard as they can. I had guys placing it where I wasn't, which was something that was a big challenge and, you know, something that took some time to get adjusted to. Um, and then obviously it's just, just like I said, it was such a competition, you know, uh, this is, this is people's jobs. You have to learn that that matters. Um, and you know, guys want to win. If you're not winning your job's in a bigger risk. So guys are pushing each other harder than ever. You know, sometimes in college you have, maybe it's your 11 starters, maybe it's your 18 that are really pushing each other. And there's the red shirt guys and stuff like this. Everybody on this team is pushing each other. Everybody wants another contract. Everybody wants to win. So it was a big, uh, big change in that regard as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, I want to dissect this a little bit. You know, you're going from university, you know, whether I'm not too sure of your situation, whether you had a sponsorship or you're, you're you know, um, funding yourself. And then you're going to a transition where you're now getting paid for what you love to do. Mm -hmm. um, everything changes. Maybe yeah. not. Maybe I'm putting something out there. But for you, did anything change once you started to get paid for what you love to do, whether that's uh, family, friends, surroundings, um, you know, the way you were treated and um, and on the field? I know it's a loaded one, but it's a good one. <laughs> no, I mean, look, I think the big change was, you know, obviously I've been in college for, what was it, five years, four and a half years at this time. And when you're in college, you're surrounded by everybody of the same age as you, same, you know, mindset, everything. So I had all my teammates as well. When I moved out to Nashville, I moved into a one bedroom apartment. Um, I had a team where, you know, we have guys that are 34 with two kids and guys that have the completely separate lives in college. Everybody has the same life at school and soccer. Like for us, we were all in it together. When you get to that professional level and the levels up, it, it's a little different where, you know, guys have different priorities on the side, you know? So for me, a big challenge was finding that, how to manage my day to day. Obviously we had training in the morning, but you know, I had so much free time in the evening. What, what am I going to do? What am I going to do to keep myself entertained? How am I going to prepare my body for the next day? Um, and that was something as well that I needed time to learn and, and adjust to. And, you know, I, I feel, felt that it took a little bit of time, but I found uh, something that worked for me that I started to do every single day, how to routine for the night and it, it got me ready for practice the next day. So it was a big, you know, a big challenge for sure. Definitely. I want to you know, share a story with you if you don't mind. Um, yeah. Shout out to Enoch Show Me when I was down in Naples, uh, United, uh, down in Naples, Florida. Uh, Enoch Show Me, you know, he shared with me a little bit insights in the, into the pro lifestyle where in regards to what you mentioned. You have a lot of, I don't want to say you have a lot of free time, but during the day after training, you you do have time. Yeah. And it, you know, when I heard about it and I started to experience it, it, it caught me off guard. So I'm wondering for you, did it catch you off guard? And then how long did it take for you to say, okay, I need to be effective with my time, have a have a schedule, and this is what I'm going to be do. This is what I'm going to do to be productive. Yeah, no, I mean it definitely affected me. It was, you know, as well moving to a city where you don't really know. You know, I didn't know I knew one or two guys in Nashville, and, and you know, besides the guys on the team, I think it's important to find that balance outside of the soccer world as well. You know, you're in it training every single day with these guys. And sometimes you need a break. You need to just get away from soccer. So 
I was fortunate. I had a friend in law school at Vanderbilt, which was right down the road. And I would go, you know, hang out with him. And that was kind of a break from the soccer world that I needed that would uh, recharge me almost. And, you know, like I said, it was definitely, definitely a challenge. And I would say it took me a month, maybe two months to really get adjusted to that, that lifestyle. You know, you're, you're trying different things. Uh, you have to keep yourself entertained, but you have to also keep yourself, you know, your body right. And, you know, make sure you're fit and ready for training that come the next day. So it was, it was a challenge, but it was something that, you know, took a little bit of time to learn, but I felt like I did well to learn about it. Awesome. Um, you mentioned this a bit before it just popped up in my mind. You sit and it's, it's leaving my mind now. Oh my gosh. Um, oh, I got it. You said that soccer's maybe I'm not quoting it exactly, but you mentioned yeah. something along the line of soccer's not a forever career. It yeah. does come to an end. Yeah. And I don't think that my opinion that a lot of players plan for the end. Mm -hmm. It's it's definitely a hard transition to go from playing pro to whatever the next thing is for you. And it sounds like you went into it with the intention that yes, this is what I love to do, this is what I want to do, but I know it's going to come to an end, and that you yeah. plan for it. So I'm interested to know how, where does that mentality come from, and um I, you you mentioned you have a sports marketing background what do you plan to do after yeah um i think where it comes from for me is uh when i was 14 when i was i think it was the end of come around the end of my first year in the sounders academy i tore my acl um so i had to take a step back and i had a whole year where i didn't play um i was watching from the side and it really made me think like this might not be forever because as a kid growing up you know it's you dream about it, it's everything um and it's on your mind all the time and everything like that. But it came a point where I had to realize that it can go away just as quick as, you know, as it comes to you. And so I had to take, you know, take a look at it realistically and, um, you know, just be prepared that something could happen that, that could change it all for me. And I think that was the thing that changed it for me and kind of opened my mind to that, that potential for it happening. You know, with my sports marketing degree, what do I want to do in the future? you know, it's still up in air. I, I, you know, I change all the time and, you know, I've thought about getting into some form of marketing of some sort. I don't know really what yet, where I want to live, anything like that. It's kind of, I play it by ear and live day to day, but I have some ideas of some things that I would, I'd be uh, interested in doing in the future, but nothing, nothing too set yet. So. For sure. Well, I mean, you're in, man, you're in USL championships. You're in, you're good, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. uh, the opportunity is definitely there and you're already killing it. You have, you have, you know, a decade plus on your resume. So you're good, man. Um, playing for North Carolina FC, what does a typical day look like for you uh, during the soccer season in terms of training, preparation and match days? Um, I also want to mention that, you know, you guys travel a lot and, and that yeah. takes a toll on you. So, you know, it'd be good to get some insight too. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I'd say a typical day for me is, you know, usually we're in at about 830. Um, so I like to get in at about 820, 815, um, you know, get it, get ready for training, do about an hour of activation, whatnot, being in the in the training room, you know, having some breakfast and doing whatever film we have to do out to the field, usually done with training. You know, usually we start training about 10 o'clock, I would say. Um, and I'd say usually we're done 12 at the latest or so. Um, and you know, obviously, like we talked about before, there's so much free time to do with the rest of the day. So, uh, I love, you know, I'm, I'm a Seattle guy, so we love our coffee. So I'll, I'll get a couple of the guys together, grab a coffee and just, you know, play cards, whatever, read, you know, just waste, you know, waste some time away and take a little break from soccer. Um, and then usually come around nighttime after dinner or whatever, I like to go on an exercise bike for, you know, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, whatever it is, just kind of let the legs move a little bit. And then I love sitting in a sauna, um, read so many health benefits about it. So I usually try and sit in the sauna for about 20 minutes every single night if I can. So, and then a little yoga stretch and off to bed. So nothing, nothing too exciting, but just preparing the body for the next day and trying to keep your mind busy during it. Yeah, there we go. The, the sun is the way to go, man. Sweat it out and, and yoga. Yeah. I, I want to get more into it, but you know, in regards to the sauna, is there anything that you do in there or you meditate or read a book or? you know listen to anything yeah it, i think it depends sometimes i'll get a teammate dragged along with me and we'll just have a conversation about whatever it is on the day um if it's just me then it's usually i have some music playing or something like that and just trying to sit and relax you know try and take my mind away from things listen to some music and just sweat it out like you said 
for sure. Give us some secrets. Is there any secrets to the magic? Like, is there anything that you picked up in the decade that you've been playing pro and and you said, wow, if I knew this thing 10 years ago, I'd, I'd be a lot further or, or anything like along those lines. Yeah. Um, I'd, honestly, I'd say is don't be afraid to ask questions. You know, if you get around somebody that's, that's been in it forever, I think ask the questions, you know, when you get, and, and you're, you're playing with, you know, better players or something like that, or you get around them, don't be afraid to ask the questions that apply to you. Um, you know, I've been lucky to work with some great goalkeepers and, and, and they've challenged me and I've been able to ask questions about technique, what they do, everything like this, and, and just be an open, you know, just listen, just learn from, from the guys that have done it forever and that have had success at the top level. So that's what, that's my opinion. That's a great point. In the competitive world of professional soccer, how do you stay motivated and maintain a high level of performance throughout your season? Yeah, I'm just, I'm, I've always been a competitive guy. So if it's, if it's on the, you know, on the game on the weekend or if it's in practice, I want to win. So for me, if I'm, if I'm out there, I'm going to try and win because if I'm not trying to win, why am I out there? So if it's in practice and we're doing a shoot drill or something, I want to make sure I'm saving all the shots, and, you know, it can be frustrating because it's impossible and you know, you're not going to save them all, but I want to challenge the forwards. I want to challenge the midfielders. I want to challenge the guys in front of me. That, like, I want to win. I want to be, you know, be better than you on the day is my thing. Yeah, for sure. Winning is important. Um, and you're the last man of defense. Mm -hmm. So what advice can you give to goalkeepers in, in regards to, to improving as a, as a goalie overall in all aspects? Yeah. Repetition. Honestly, it's, it's playing games, seeing situations, put yourself in different situations. Like I said before, it, it's going to be a challenge. You're going to make mistakes. The prime doesn't come, you know, obviously maybe your prime comes a little bit earlier, but the prime usually for goalkeepers comes a little bit later. So, so don't be afraid to try new things and, and just put yourself in these situations to challenge yourself over and over and over again, and you'll learn from them and, and only get better from them. Yeah. Um, you know, this one's, a, this one's a hard one to get around. Yeah. How do you keep a healthy relationship with the other goalies? You know, you guys are friends, teammates. It's a job. Yeah. It's a competitive job. But it's mm -hmm. like you're fighting to, to play. To be yeah. on the field. 90, there's only 90 minutes. So, um, you know, again, how do you keep a healthy relationship but still compete to say, you know, I want to be on the field and, and, and play? No, it's a great question. I mean, like, like you said, the goalkeeper, unlike any other position, one guy plays, you know, you yeah. can't get on the field anywhere else and you're not getting subbed into the game unless there's an injury. Um, you know, I've been fortunate to have good relationships with all the goalkeepers I've played with. And I think what helps that and something how I look at it is the goalkeeper doesn't pick the lineup. So the coach is picking the lineup. So don't take it personally with the other goalkeeper. You know, you should push each other. You should push to make each other better. And at the end of the day, hopefully the coach picks the better one and whoever's playing better of, of all of you, but it's not the other goalkeeper that's trying to trying to pick himself over you. You know, it's the coach's job. So work work to push each other. At the end of the day, if one's playing and one's not, you still want to win for me. So if I can help the team from the bench and that's my role for the game, then I'm gonna do that. And if if my goals, my you know, role is to be on the field and win like that, then I'm gonna do that. But I'm not gonna, you know, have intentionally bad service or try and score on somebody. I'm going to try and push you to make you better because at the end of the day, you know, I would want the same for me. Yeah. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. How do you hound, how do you handle the pressure and expectations that come with being a professional soccer player, both from fans and yourself? I mean, look, you have to appreciate the fans at all times. You know, there's people coming out to watch you know how lucky we are to sign autographs and have people, you know, cheer for you and come and watch you. So I think you have to enjoy it and appreciate it while you're outside of it. But once you're on the field, it's just a game. It's a game like you were as a kid, like uh, it's 11 v 11. And, and you just have to focus on that. You know, people are going to be yelling at you. People are going to be disappointed at you. You know, people are going to maybe hate you after the game, but it doesn't matter at the end of the day, like, we're still playing a game we grew up playing. Like you just have to appreciate that for what it is and really take a step, you know, step away from the stadium around you, but, you know, be focused on the field that you're on. Absolutely. And you guys are playing in front of thousands, tens of thousands of people uh, yeah. each game day. So lots of pressure mm -hmm. uh, and lots of support, home games. Yeah, lots of support.
the last question I'll ask you is before the fun ones, what has been the most memorable moment for you in your career so far? I, I think still for me, the, the moment I got drafted was a big one. Um, you know, that was something growing up here and, and, and being around MLS, being in Seattle and everything like that. The dream was always to to make it to the MLS, get drafted or, you know, sign a home ground. Unfortunately, I didn't get to go to Seattle, but, um, you know, I, I got lucky to get drafted to Nashville. And, you know, that was a, a very memorable moment for me. I remember my parents and my brother calling me after it happened and, you know, they were all crying and it, you know, it was just a great experience. One of, one of the happiest moments, happiest days of my life for sure. Nice. Yeah. I got some fun ones to wrap it up here. Go you got to answer them quick. Okay. Uh, who's your, do you have a favorite MLS team? I, I'm, I would say Seattle and Nashville. You know, Nashville was the team I played for and Seattle was the academy I grew up playing for. You know, so th those are my two. Those are my two for sure. Do you watch any overseas soccer, Liga, EPL or anything like that? I do. I lot, watch a lot of England and obviously the Champions League. And if there's other games on, I'll, I'll turn on to it. So. Uh, what's your favorite EPL team to watch? I'm actually a Leeds United fan, so I'm watching the championship, unfortunately. A little bit tougher to watch the games, but uh, that's that's my favorite team. Yeah. And what about favorite goalkeeper all time and now? It's a tough one. Um, I grew up, like I said, watching Leeds. Paul Robinson was, was my probably one of my favorite goalkeepers growing up. I love Peter Cech as well, but Paul Robinson was was one of my favorites growing up. And now... That's a tough one. Uh, I, I love Ederson Allison. The battle between those two is sensational. Ter Stegen. There, there's so many good ones right now. I think Courtois is fantastic as well. Uh, there's so many good goalkeepers out there. It's tough to pick just one. Yeah. I haven't heard Peter Cech in so long. I used to use yeah. him in the people ultimate team, man. He was quality. <laughs> Unreal. Unreal. I, I got I to tee this one up. Um, you know, one of my favorite goalkeepers to, to, to use and watch was uh what was his name he used to play for real madrid carlos was it it's carlos casillas casillas yes yes mm -hmm. casillas the man himself would you do who would you choose casillas tersagan courtois or neuer who would you choose if you have to choose one <laughs> uh, i think for me i would go courtois of those ones i would go courtois but it, it, that's a challenge that's a challenge for sure you know, obviously Casillas winning the World Cup, Neuer winning a World Cup. You know, well, Ter Stegen's won one as well. Obviously, Neuer was playing, but even though Courtois hasn't won it, him in the Champions League and everything like that, he, I think he's the best for me. You know, I'm probably wrong, but for me, he's the best one. Yeah, you, you know, it just came to my, my mind. What's so interesting is, like, when I was growing up watching soccer, like, the, the, the two goalkeepers that really stood up for me was Casillas mm -hmm. and uh, Neuer. Neuer was just... Yeah big guy and then Casillas was small and he was just so good man yeah no it's it's goalkeeping is interesting you know there's so many and this was another thing that I've always said is that try try different techniques of goalkeeping you know there's different goalkeeping from German goalkeeping to the Spanish style to you know every different style so you know try different things and find what works for you because there's no one right way if you keep the ball out of the back of the net then you're doing it the right way that's what I would say yeah that's that's a good question to ask the style of, of goalkeeping that's not something i think of because i'm not a goalkeeper myself yeah, yeah. you are right there that's you know that, that's how you got it right there so that's a good one to ask yeah. um a few more here what's your favorite movie favorite movie um it's a tough one maybe a little recency bias i love parasite uh the south korean movie was fantastic so I'd recommend it if nobody's seen it, but it's it's a very good movie. Very a little scary bit movie. Thrilling, but great movie. Great movie. It's a scary one. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. A little yeah. bit. Uh what about favorite activity besides, you know, playing soccer? Uh, honestly for me is the uh, grab a coffee with friends. You know, I think a uh, good coffee, I can either bring a book or we can just have a conversation is always I love a coffee shop. I grew up going to them in Seattle, so it's kind of the culture out there and you know, I love it. You're a coffee guy. You got, you got to put me on. I've tried coffee at the yeah. U.S. Soccer Foundation event down in D.C. And I was like, I know someone that really loves coffee. I'm like, what? Yeah. What's about, what's so good about coffee? I don't get it. Maybe I'm doing it wrong. Is there like, <laughs> I need, need to go to a special place or something? Or you got to go out to Seattle. We got the best coffee out there. That's what I would say. Sounds good. Oh, I got to go with you, man. You got to take. Yeah, me. I'll take you out. I'll take you out. We can grab a coffee. Um, last two here. Who is your favorite music artist? 
I grew up a big Arctic Monkeys fan. So that was my favorite growing up. And, you know, I've got a couple of their albums on vinyl and I'd probably say they're my favorite of all time. You know, it's, I think it changes by the day, but overall I'd say they're my favorite. And the last one, this is the big one, Messi or Ronaldo? Messi for me. Messi for me. Both are sensational, but Messi, Messi is the best for me. Why, why Messi? It just, the game looks so easy to him. You know, he, he, he walks through it and he, he dominates. It's incredible. Um, there was a story. I was lucky when I was in Seattle, my U18 year of academy, uh, the Copa America was happening in, in the United States. And Argentina was playing in Seattle against, I believe it was Peru. And uh, we got invited to go out and be like bumpers for them at training. You know, I was working on the side with the goalkeepers, but I remember watching Messi warm up and be on the field and doing his thing. And he is, he's a different level. He's, he's unreal. Well, you know, top, top of the game for me. Sure. Well, Tor, so, before we go, I'd like to thank you for taking the time for joining us on the One Soccer Nation podcast today. No, it's been a pleasure. I'm so happy to come on and, you know, share my story. And I'm, I'm glad I can speak for the goalkeepers out there, hopefully. Thanks. Yeah.